Space, the final frontier. Space has lots of planets, and now so can your Minecraft world, using only two commands. Welcome back, Mushroom Man Toad here, and that's right, today I have created in Minecraft 1.13 planet systems using only two commands per planet. Well, four if you count the two to spawn them in, but really, it's just two commands, and we get an awesome effect like this. This is actually a two-scale model of the solar system. Like, the planets aren't the right sizes, but their distances and orbit speeds are proportional to each other the way they would be in the real world. So, there's Jupiter there. There's Saturn. Uranus is over here. Aha! I knew I'd find Neptune out here somewhere. There's Neptune. And Pluto's even farther out than that. But it does exist. In fact, I think that's it right there. Yeah, there's Pluto all the way back there. And so this is a two-scale model of the solar system. Now, I'm sure the reason you clicked on this video is probably that you'd like to be doing something like this in your own Minecraft world. So now, I can uh, show you how this works and how you can get these planets going for yourself. Now, while I'd like to be able to brag that this is some really complicated mechanism, it really isn't. And I will uh, show you here, I'll break down every single piece of these commands, and I will explain what's happening. Each one of these is a planet. So this is one planet, this is another planet, this is another planet, and so on. So, what's happening for each one of these, you'll probably notice they're basically all the same. So first you have execute at, at E, and then this tag. This tag here would be for the sun, and I'll show why later on in this video. Just trust me for now, this 0001 means the sun. Basically, any one of these that's an odd number is going to be the sun. Any one that's an even number like this is a planet. Okay. So it's going to execute at the sun as the sun. That's a pretty typical way to begin a command in 1.13. And you're going to run, and then it's just a teleport command. You're literally just teleporting the sun in a circle. This right here... You've, you've probably used these three places before, if you've done much teleporting, you know, teleport yourself to a coordinate. Well, there's also these two places here where you can select the rotation. And here it's just teleporting itself 18 degrees around in a circle. And so every time that command runs, the sun is just teleporting around. This next command here, once again, starts off exactly the same way. Then it's going to run a teleport. It's going to teleport the closest planet with a tag of 2. As you see, every planet has its own unique tag, same with every sun, sun in quotes. So it's going to teleport the closest planet, eight blocks up, that's just so that it's all in a straight line, and then two blocks in front of the sun. In this case, it's 3.65, in this case, it's 5.05, .05, and that's all just to simulate so that it's basically dead-on a replica of the solar system. And it's also going to, this part here is just so that the uh, planet's rotation doesn't exactly match the sun's rotation because that looks a little weird. So now the uh, planets always have a different rotation because they are going to copy the rotation from the sun if I don't do that. So that's why I add this, so that they've just got a slightly different rotation. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So you literally just teleport the sun in a circle, teleport the planet in front of the sun. And that way, as the sun spins, the planet just kind of whips around the sun. And that's all there is to this. So now you're probably wondering, how do I set this up in my own world? You know, how do I get numbers exact like this? How did you come up with these exact numbers for distances and stuff? Like, did you spend hours on a calculator? The answer is no. But I will explain that in a minute. I'm actually going to outro the video first. And if you're really interested in doing this for yourself, maybe for map decoration or something, which is really what I'm thinking this is going to be best for. If you're interested in doing something like this, I will be explaining at the end how you can do this for yourself really really easily, so you don't even have to type out all of this stuff. But in the meantime, if you're just here to see this concept and see planets orbiting the sun, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you did like this, make sure you like this video. And if you really love it, then do make sure you subscribe if you're not already, so you can see more fun stuff that I can make in 1.13 right as I make it. Okay, now I'm going to talk about how you can create these planets really easily for yourself. Right, so I know once before I've talked about Eclipse on this channel, and that's because it's truly, truly awesome for creating stuff. So, for this, I actually have the code here, and you can get this entire code down in the description of this video at the uh, pastebin link. Let's go ahead and copy it into your own Eclipse class, and you should be good to go. So what we have here is a class that will generate for you the command, so I'll just demonstrate it really quick. I have some stuff in here for Pluto right now, so if I just run this program, you'll see down at the bottom here, I get the commands to spawn the armor stands, 
which are the planets and the sun, and then I get the commands that do the teleportation and make it accurate. So how does this work? I'll work through these variables one by one. So this first one here is the uh, sun type. For this one, you'd want to use whatever uh, block type you want to use for the sun. Now this would normally be blank unless this is the first sun in the solar system, in which case I would probably recommend going Minecraft colon glowstone. So then you've got your glowstone sun like I showed earlier on in the video. But in this case, this is not the first planet, this is Pluto, so not going to do it like that. Then you want to pick the block you want the planet to look like. In this case, it would be light blue concrete, and you can use any block you want for that. Next one is the spawn coordinates, so wherever you want this planet to spawn in. If you just want it to spawn in at your location, just use these uh, tildes. Otherwise, you can use exact coordinates, which I am using for this. And that's everything to set up the planets. That'll get you your first two commands pretty much finished. But your next command the ones that actually make it do something are controlled by these variables. I'm actually going to start down here with these. So the closest orbit is how many seconds of time you want the closest planet to take to orbit the sun. So if you want, say, the closest planet to the sun to take one second to go around, you just use one. And that's how long it takes Mercury to go around the sun. And my video is one second. And then also the number of Earth years you want the closest planet to the sun to take. Mercury's years are about one-fourth of Earth's years, so I use 0.25. Next up is the closest miles. This is how many hundred thousand miles away from the star your closest planet in the solar system should be. And now we're getting into the stuff where you actually get to set up the planet. So you gotta have all of these in for the game to be able to calculate accurate distances between planets. And now, for this one, this is how many hundred thousand miles away your planet is. So in the case of Pluto, it is 3,670,100,000 miles away from the center of the sun. From the center of the sun. From the center of the solar system. I guess that's technically the center of the sun. On average, it's that many miles away from the sun. And then you have years, which is the number of years it takes the planet you're working on to orbit the sun. And once you have that all set, you should be good to go. The other thing you're going to want to do, and I told you I would explain this later on, and I'll explain it now, is you want to set up a tag for the sun and a tag for the planet. Now, this could be anything. If you wanted to call this Bob and Bob the planet, then you could do that if you wanted to. But in order for, in, for simplicity, what I like to do is I like to use numbers like this. So for the sun, it's going to be an odd number. And then for the planet, it'll be an even number. And this tag is perfectly unique to this sun and this planet. That way nothing ever gets confused. And as I make more planets, I just increase each one of these numbers by two. So, so for the next sun and planet system, I would use three and four. The next one I would use five and six, etc., etc. And then down here, these are basically obsolete. I would just leave these alone. They just make sure things calculate right. I guess how far the closest planet is from the star and blocks... So Mercury is two blocks away from the sun at all times. Two is a good number. If you get any closer and the planet will be running into the sun. I guess you can get farther away if you want to, but that's actually it. Then everything down here just makes the planets happen. So once I've inputted all that data, you'll see if I press play, boom, there you go. You've got your armor stand spawns and then your orbit mechanics. And that's it. That's all there is to using this uh, command generator. So, I hope you've enjoyed. This took me a lot of work to create, so a like would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and yeah, I hope you can find some cool way to use this. If you do use this in your own project, uh, do let me know. I'd be really interested to see how you can use this. Okay, bonus something. I'm going to include one more little bonus thing at the end for you. If you use execute as, then you're the tag of your planet at the tag of your planet, so I'll open up notepad here and just show you what I'm talking about. If you were to use execute at the tag of your planet, as the tag of your planet, then you would run this command. You could go teleport at a r equals 2, and then you just set up some coordinates, so, you know, wherever you want it to take them, and then any player that touches that planet will get taken to that location. To, you could take him to that planet in-game if you built a little area that looked like the planet. So that's a cool little thing you can do with this. You can make systems where you can actually select the planet you go to. So, have fun with that.
Thank you for watching. This has been Mushroom Man Toad, rambling on about awesome planets in Minecraft. And I will see you in the next one.